Hey guys, this is Aaron Westberg with Speed Hut. I just want to show our new GPS, the 3 and 3 8 size uh, and 4 inch size, and what comes with that new GPS speedometer that we sell. And we'll just take this box out here, open it up, and see the front of the GPS. And there's a spin ring on the back that will hold the GPS into the dash, which spins off the back of the GPS. We'll take that off. Set that aside there. There's the GPS spin ring. And here's the GPS unit. You can see it's ultra thin. It's about an inch deep with threads all the way up to case which will allow you to mount up to about three quarters of an inch of dash. Uh, it's very easy to use this included spin ring to uh, spin on the back and tighten it up on the dash. This is a hot wire start that lets the GPS acquire quickly. Uh, it's optional. Um, you hook this directly up to your battery and then the GPS will acquire in less than two seconds. Um, this is the uh, main power wire. Uh, the GPS just requires a red for power, black is ground, and white is lighting. And this is our dial lighting. So it's very easy to hook up. We'll show you that later here in a second when we put it in, install it in the car. Um, also comes with the uh, antenna, which I'll show you what that looks like. Comes with a 15 foot antenna. Uh, this is waterproof. It's magnetic on the back and so you can mount it up on top of your car, outside of your car if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Uh, most guys will tuck this antenna. You can see it's pretty small up in the corner of their dash so it can peek out through the windshield. Um, or underneath fiberglass, it works well underneath fiberglass because it can actually um, see and receive the GPS through, um, through uh, the fiberglass. It plugs in the back through this connector here, which plugs in the back of the GPS unit right here. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's simple just to plug it in. And then we've got 15 foot of cord, which is plenty. You just bundle up the extra that you're not using. Um, and that's that instructions on how to wire the GPS up, how to use it, the dial lighting inverter, this is in charge of lighting up the background numbers of the GPS unit, which plugs in to this connector here on the back of the GPS, just a simple snap connection, it takes 12 volts power, dash lighting, and ground, and it lights up your dial. And this is the extra power harness that comes with the GPS unit that plugs into the main power harness here. So it allows you to quickly disconnect the GPS unit if you wanted to to take it out later. This then just gets hooked up to your 12 volt power, ground, and uh, white wires for lighting. So let's take a look at what it looks like in the car installed and uh, you can, we can go through the different menu options. Okay, we're out in the car. We've installed the GPS in a metal bracket that we made to support the GPS so we could show the uh, different menu functions of the GPS. And you can see that we just have the antenna for right now just lying up on top of the dash. Uh, it's plugged into our cigarette lighter uh, with this uh, cable here, 12 volts ground and the lighting, so it's very simple to install. And uh, after about 20 seconds, it's acquired and it's ready to start to log miles. I'll show you what it looks like when it acquires. Uh, with no power, LCD screen's blank, and then when we power up the GPS, the needle will zero, it'll show the Revolution logo, and then show this acquiring word saying that we're acquiring satellites. If we had the hot start set up, which is this wire in the back that we were talking about earlier, um, it will acquire in about two seconds if that's constantly connected to the battery. Here's our LCD screen. Um, you can see the overall mileage is up on top with a resettable trip meter on the bottom. And let's just go through some of the different menu options that this GPS speedometer has. So a quick button press will enter the menu and you can see we can toggle through different functions. Here's the time. Um, here's the current elevation. We're sitting at 4,600 feet. Press it again. Uh, this would be a digital uh, display of the mile per hour that would show up in the LCD screen along with, of course, the needle that's moving showing you the uh, mile per hour. This is the uh, compass setting. It shows the direction, north, south, northeast, um, that type of thing, the direction the car is heading. This is the peak recall. It shows the maximum speed before it was 105 miles an hour. 
if we wanted to clear it, we'd just press and hold the button down to clear it back to zero. Get back to the menu again. Direction. Here's our zero to 60 run. Um, if you can see that with the sun there, but this is the, uh, if you wanted to do a zero to 60 mile per hour, you'd press and hold the stage, and then as soon as you start driving the car, it will count time. It count the time down to the hundredth of a second, and then show the uh, the time that it took you to reach 60 miles an hour. This is a quarter mile function. Uh, you you press and hold the button to stage, and then as soon as you release the brakes and start going, it'll track the quarter mile distance and show your uh, trap speeds through the quarter mile and the time that it took to go through the quarter mile. And this is just the current software rev of the GPS. It's 140 mile an hour. It's more of just an about screen. And that's all the manual functions of the GPS. Um, we, can, we can do many different GPS speeds up to, we've done some for land speed cars, four or 500 miles an hour, um, all the way down to five miles an hour. So we've got, we've got a standard line of product on the website. Um, most guys are picking the 120, 160, 200 mile per hour GPS. Okay, those are the functions of the GPS. Let's head out on the track and see how it does.